Aloha and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do my first draw with me. So let's get to the drawing. This is the first in a series of draw with me's that I want to do. I've got a couple more planned. Today I'm going to be drawing this turtle. I'm sure you've noticed that the background is already painted and there's a reason for that and it's a pretty special reason which we'll get to in a little bit. But I'm going to start with pencil because I want to make sure that the proportions are right before I move on to ink. Uh, I don't want to have you know one arm of this turtle like really small the other one really big or its head really small for its body. Uh, I want it to be in proportion with the rest of it. So by doing it in pencil first I'm able to make sure that my proportions are right, erase, move lines if I need to. And another thing I'm looking for when I'm doing it in pencil is I want to make sure that the entire composition fits right on the page that it's not, you know, shifted to the left or right. Because the background's already painted, I want to make sure that it just fits right and that it fits the background. And when my pencil's drawing is complete, I'll usually stand back and just study it for a little while just to make sure that everything looks good because I don't want to move on to ink too fast. All right, this one looks good, so let's move on to the ink portion. And like a portrait artist, I start with the head. I start with the eyes especially. You know what they say, the eyes. Looking into the eyes is like looking into the soul. So I want to look into the soul of this sea turtle. Once I get the eyes right, I move on. I'm basically just doing an outline, I'm trying to outline everything. I outline the head, outline the shell. I'm just looking to get overall shapes in. Since I have the pencil drawing underneath, I'm able to basically follow that just to make sure that the proportions are still right. And then I just, once I have the outline done, I'll just start moving inward, working on more and more detail as I go. So I'll start with the bigger shapes on the inside of the, the pads of the feet or arms, whatever they're called, flippers. I'll continue to keep moving around the drawing and work on the finer details, the smaller stuff, the wrinkles. This is actually the longest part of the drawing is getting this all inked in. So I'll take this opportunity to explain that background to you. I had some friends visiting me a while back and I had another painting on my desk and it wasn't even done. I just, it basically looked like this, which you're seeing right now, which was a, a single colored background. And then I had just inked in a turtle but my plan was to paint the entire turtle different colors like I normally do. And she told me that she thought it looked great. So why not leave it? And I'm like, no, that's not my plan. So I'm not going to leave it. So I was heading to Seattle to see my grandkids. So I took my paint and my pad with me and I decided to have my grandkids paint backgrounds for me. So this is one of four that they painted backgrounds for. This one was actually done by my granddaughter. <laughs> so now you understand why I, I couldn't screw this one up. I had to make sure the ink was done right. And that pencil drawing really helped. I was able to stand back and make sure it was perfect before I moved on to ink. These are intended to have just a single color background and then I'm going to do a monotone turtle on top of it. I've actually got four in this series. And you see I've already done the wrinkles in the neck uh, and the arms and around the shell. That took forever. It's very tedious. Uh, just getting them to look right, like getting them to look like wrinkles and not a road map. And then I moved on to the last flipper and then I've got the two back flippers that are partially shown in the background. And then we're almost done with the first stage of the ink and getting ready to add some tone to this image. This is just our first ink stage. After we add some tone, we're going to do a second pass with ink pens. Now I've moved on, I'm using Tombow brush pens. They're almost like cheating. Before discovering them, I would use hatching, cross hatching to get my tone in. But these pens are like, miracles. I'm able to blend colors from black all the way down to a very, very light gray. 
uh, just by, you know, I can put some black on and then just pull some of that black down into other color or into the lighter colors of gray and it, it blends so well. It, it makes my drawings like look amazing. It's like, uh, would I be as good of an artist without them? I don't know. <laughs> uh, they're a pretty amazing tool to be able to use though. It's like having the capability to blend pencils, but you're doing it with ink. Using these pens has really made my work look more three-dimensional, uh, or it's easier to make it look three-dimensional. I mean, cross-hatching works, hatching works, obviously. People use it all the time. I, I used it before I discovered these. I use it all the time in all of my drawings. I'll put a link in the description so you can get some for yourself if you want to give them a shot. They're pretty cool. By using a darker color around the edge of these pads, or I don't, I don't even know what those are called, that are on the flippers there, but by using a darker color around the edge and then a lighter color on the inside, it just it gives them more depth, it makes them stand out. And now I moved back to ink pen and I'm doing cross hatching, uh, trying to give just to give it a little variety, I'm going to cross hatch all of the, the patches that are on the flippers and on the face. I just did a, a cross hatching or a hatching, which is basically just parallel lines and then parallel lines crossing each other. And then the further apart they are, the lighter they are, the closer together they are, the darker they'll look. As much as I love the Tombow brush pens, I still use cross hatching in all of my work in addition to the Tombos. It just gives my work a little more life, a little more variety. I think if I just used the Tombos alone, it would they'd be boring. They would just be yeah, boring. And when I finished the cross hatching, it just didn't have enough depth for me, so I went back in with the Tombow brush pens. But obviously I didn't record that because you're not going to see it. But here's the final where you can see where I went back in and just darkened up around the flippers and under the body just to give it a little more depth. Well, thanks for watching. Mahalo. See you next time.